No matter how many stories you might have read or studied or analyzed, when you sit down to actually write one yourself, it can still feel like an impossible task, especially for beginners. If you feel like that, hang in there. I've got a few things that might help you get started or help you beat the blank page. The mistake that I see a lot of writers make, and I've made this countless times myself before, is you get too carried away with your story and that actually isn't helpful. Your idea could be intricate, interesting, exciting, epic, all of those things and a million more, but how do you take that feeling that you're so excited about and transfer it onto the page? Well, the first thing to realize is that you don't. That's not really possible. Transferring all of that detail exactly as you want it, in the order that you want it, at a good pace and having no problem doing it, it's not really a thing, or at least it hasn't been for me over the last 10 years or so of writing. So if it feels impossible to you, that might be why. It doesn't mean that you're no good at writing. It's just too big of a task when you approach it that way. You're probably just overwhelmed by all the stuff that you're excited to write. So what do you do instead? Well, the simple version is find one thing and start with that. And I've got a suggestion for what that one thing might be. When I sit down to write, no matter what stage of the story I'm at, I find it always helps me to think about what matters most about the story. And if you've seen any of my previous videos on this channel, you might already know what this is. It's the thing that stories are always about, people. Don't think about everything that'll happen in your story, the cool heist, the clever twist, or the perfect ending. Put all of that stuff aside just for now. Instead, try just thinking for a while about why any of that stuff matters. And if you're not sure why that is, again, it doesn't mean you're a terrible writer. It just means you need to stop and give it some thought because you're probably overwhelmed still by all of the actions and events that you've got planned. The thing is, all of that stuff, no matter how interesting or exciting it might be, it won't matter if there's no human connection. The bank robber at that final heist has to feel like they've got no choice but to go through with it, even though they hate themselves for it. The shocking twist has no impact if your readers don't feel a connection to your character and they don't have any expectations of them. And that perfect ending won't be perfect if your readers don't care enough to actually read to the end. All of that can be avoided though, if we think about what matters about the story, the human connection. What does your character want? What do they need to make them whole? What's missing in their life? What are they desperately trying to correct? What will they prioritise above everything else? That is what your story is actually all about, so have a think about it. Once you know that, all of those plot events and twists and turns can relate to that. It's what gives your readers a reason to care about what they're reading. It matters more than just momentary excitement of what's going on in the story. The meaning, this human element, is the platform on which the entire story sits. Get that figured out, and it can be anything you want, and you'll have the life force of your story. So okay, we know that, that helps. But the question still remains, how do you write a story? Where do you start? Again, it's all about not overwhelming yourself by thinking you've got so much to do. Think of your favorite book or your favorite TV show or your favorite movie. Think of the first line or the first 30 seconds. Does it tell you everything about the story? Does it tell you even everything that you need to know about the story? Probably not because it's only been a moment. Starting a story is exactly the same. You just have to start with a moment. You can't introduce all of the details that your readers are gonna to need to know in your very first line. It's like trying to get an elephant through a keyhole. It's overwhelming to write, it's overwhelming to read, and it doesn't read like life, it reads like fiction. In order to get those first few lines down, you need to reduce your story to a moment. It doesn't have to be a completely action-packed moment. It doesn't have to be a hugely significant moment, but it just needs to be a moment that feels real. Think about what your character could be doing in this moment. Are they standing on the street watching cars pass, just taking a moment to breathe? Are they surrounded by people talking in a bar, but not actually talking themselves? Are they holding a letter that they've just opened, not believing what they're reading? A moment, a tiny slice of a character's life that tricks the reader into believing they're a real person. Show that in your first few lines. Let your readers into your character's head just for a moment so they can follow along from there. For example, if we start with the bank robbery or the heist story, it might be tempting to start that story with something like this. It was the day of the final heist. She had to make it work to save her family. The boss had them holed up somewhere and she knew she'd never get them back if she didn't fall in line. Sure, there's stakes to this story, that's obvious. There's a bit about the plot, a little bit of character maybe, but how human does it feel? It's what the story is about, absolutely. It nails that, but Ask yourself what a reader would feel about this. We're packing in all of this information 
and the return on the investment of all of those words is not really that much. So instead, I think it's much more effective and easier to write if we don't overwhelm ourselves. If we show a slice of the character's life, hint at the story, and just give them a moment. It might not have all of the information, but we don't really need it to. What we need it to have is humanity and a bit of heart. The details can come after when the reader already knows the story is alive. How about this instead? The mirror was fogged up, so even her reflection didn't look like herself. The bag on the countertop was already zipped up. She checked for the outline of the gun for the third time, eyes closed, breathing slow. For them. This last time, last one, for them, she said. All right, maybe I won't win a Booker Prize for that opening, but to me it has something that the other version didn't, which is a sense of the deeper meaning of the story. It doesn't have all of the information, it's just a moment. Once you've got that moment, you've got your beginning, and then you can think about how to bridge across to all of those plot points and twists and turns and events, piece by piece. To use another elephant analogy, for some reason, I tend to find the question, how do you eat an elephant, really helps when it comes to writing, because the answer is so simple, one bite at a time. Those huge concepts that you have in your mind don't just leap fully formed onto the page and ready to go. They're transferred there in lots of bites, if you like, lots of moments, piece by piece. At least that's how I've written every single story I've ever put down. The first time around, whether that's your first story ever or your first attempt at a particular story, worry about nothing other than getting started, keeping going and reaching the end. Don't think about how well you might be doing or how badly you think you're doing. Don't think about how you're going to reach that ending that you've got in mind. And don't think about whether that opening is really good enough after all. Analysis comes later, so does rewriting. So get the story down, fix it after. Nobody writes perfect first drafts, no one. It's not a requirement, so you don't need to worry about that. And another tip is, if you feel the story pulling you one way or the other, even if that's away from the twist or the ending that you had planned, go with it, follow it at least for a while, because I tend to find a story that surprises you will surprise readers. So how do you write a story? Start with a moment. Show us the character's mind, the meaning, the heart of the story. Then just keep going until there's nothing else to write. The final step is to be proud of yourself for trying this and to be happy in the knowledge that the perfect story doesn't exist, nor is it required. It's far better to write an imperfect story than to hold a perfect idea in your mind forever and never use it. I hope this helps. Let me know. Ask any questions you want in the comments. Happy writing.